Today you will learn everything you need to know about Google Optimize multivariate tests. If you want to test multiple elements and find the best combination, this methodology is just for you. Hello there, welcome to Ads Courses. I'll teach you the best PPC and web analytics strategies and secrets. If you want to support this channel, subscribe and share it. Okay, so let's dive in. Okay, so before I will actually show you how to create a multivariate test, let's talk about what they actually are and what are the differences between A-B testing and multivariate tests. I will also talk about what you need to actually prepare before you run your first multivariate test or any other conversion rate optimization test. Okay, so what are the differences between multivariate tests, so-called MVT tests and A-B tests? Okay, so let's start with A-B tests or how they also call them A-B-N testing or split testing. Some people also call them univariate tests because this concept is testing or should test only one change at a time. So like in the name A-B, you test version A versus version B. You can also have multiple versions, not only two, so that's why it's N-B-N. Right? You can have A, B, C, D, E version, etc. And but you only test this version compared to this version or this version or C version, etc. Right? And you should test only one element in A B testing because if you make multiple changes in one variation, for example, you change the button, the call to action text, and the headline and the picture, the main picture, you change three different things, right? And and you actually don't know which of these changes made the impact on the performance. Is it the picture? Is it the call to action text? Or is it the headline, etc. Right? So that's why in A B testing, you should always test one element or one section. Multivariate tests, on the other hand, is an experiment that tests two or more elements or sections to understand their effects on each other, right? So, for example, variants of a headline can be tested at the same time as variants of a hero image, for example. So instead of showing which page variant is more effective, like in AB experiment, a multivariate test identifies the most effective combination of variants, rather than the two or three page variants typically found in a simple AB test. So multivariant tests frequently test multiple variants of a multiple page element simultaneously at the same time. So in practice, you can create an experiment testing two different sections. For example, let's say you want let's say you want to change a call to action button text and call to action button color, right? In the second section. So the first section is CTA text, and the second section is CTA color, right? You can have a third section, for example, if you want. like. This is just a simple example. So multivariate test will actually test and create multiple different combinations of each variation of each section. So it will test every possible combination of button text and button colors, right? And pick the best combination. Okay, before you run an actual experiment, you need to be aware of the problem of data noise and how to deal with this problem. So the more traffic you have in your experiment or more time passes by, the data noise should decrease, right? But it can still exist. That's why sometimes if you would create an experiment and run the same experiment multiple times, you could find out, a, you know, reverse different results because of the data noise. And that's why it's a very good practice to first create an experiment with variations that contain no differences. And this will measure the natural difference in scoring. So whatever number you collect here in this experiment, it's just here to serve as a background noise. So your future experiments will have to result in significantly bigger number if you want to take them seriously, right? So this is the method of dealing with data nodes. Create an experiment with each variation looking totally the same, right? And see the differences here. Okay, so before you run an experiment, you should prepare yourself. So first of all, you need to have a goal, a clear goal in mind. For example, it could be like an increase of a conversion rate by 5% or increase the transaction volume by 10%, right? So you need to have this goal. Second of all, you need to, of course, have an idea. Okay, so we have our goal and what is the idea to obtain this goal, right? So it could be, I can 
increase my transaction volume by changing the call to action text and a hero image. Okay, so this is the idea. You also need to have a hypothesis. For example, putting a promo text on the button and showing an image with a product should increase the conversion rate compared to a standard call to action and a picture of a person. So this is my hypothesis. You may need and should actually run a multiple test over time for the same goal that you have because you will see that not all of your hypotheses will be true. So they won't impact your goal. And it's also recommended to run two or more same experiments to see if the results are the same because sometimes you will notice a dramatic reversal so don't make conclusions too early you need to be patient especially if the results are not significant if you would run the same test again you may have a situations with a complete reversal effects results right and this may be, seem weird but in practice this is just a statistics right Okay, and the last one that you need to prepare for is the decisiveness. Sometimes you run a test, days pass by, weeks pass by, and there are no clear winners and differences in performance are almost the same. So don't keep these tests running. It's most likely your hypothesis is wrong and your changes don't matter. So work on another hypothesis. Okay, so we have the theory behind us. Now I will show you how to create multivariate tests using Google Optimize. Okay, as you can see, I have like two draft demo tests here, but let's create another experiment. Okay, so it will be MVT, so that we will know in future that this is a multivariate test, and let's say button call color text. Okay, this is, I'm testing it on a very simple, my old website actually, uh, it's not updated. This is a one page website. Okay, so I just put a home page in here, URL and you select multivariate test of course and now we can see the configuration section in Google Optimize and it's just a simple step-by-step -step process so the first step is to actually create your variations and your sections because in MVT tests we may select multiple sections so section is actually the section of your changes so in this example one section would be button text and the second section would be button color. In a, another example, the first section would be headline text and the second section would be hero image, for example, right? And you could create a third section, for example, button text. You need to keep in mind that in total, you can have more than 16 combinations in free version of Google Optimize, right? So, for example, if we create three different variations in section one and three here, we would have four variations with original in section A and four in section B. So four times four is 16, and we couldn't create more sections or variations in this example. So let's create a variation in section A. Uh, let's just go back and rename it here. So let's rename this section so that we know that's button uh, text, right? Sorry. Okay, so this section is button text and this section is button color. Okay, so let's add a variation. Let's name it. So it will be this is button text. So in this example, it's a good way to actually uh, write this text in here, right? What we will change, let's go to the website. It's a simple element, very simple element. This call to action here. Now it's free audit. Let's change it to to a text like that for example okay now we just need to actually modify this uh, variation so so you simply click on this element and if you have google optimize installed on your website of course you will be able to open this website google optimize editor so wait for it to load it will actually load your website and you will be able to modify elements on your website using the editor okay so let's scroll down to this element and if you don't know how to use this editor of google optimize i have another video about running a google optimize experiments in general so i cover this topic in more details so in this video i will just do the changes so i click on the element edit element so we can edit text html etc so i prefer to actually edit html and place my text here And that's it. You can also edit this element 
by editing the text you just edit your text like that and click done okay so this is a simple change you just save this change okay so now we will add another variation another, another text so just for an example something like this you know just an example it doesn't matter actually that much but to show you some ideas you can you can compare call to action text like a general text with text with numbers text with prizes text with promotional text with percentages etc right just some ideas okay so let's <coughs> edit this element again let's edit this option that's it let's save this done okay so we've got our variant Let's create another one, the last one. Okay, so let's make these changes fast. Okay. Okay, so let's head to the button color section. So we've got our original color, which is like red, reddish. And let's create another variant. So it will be like blue, for example. Let's edit this. Okay, if you select this element or any other element, actually, if you scroll down, you've got all the parameters of this element, right? From HTML and CSS. So You've got the background color, you've got the border color. So there are plenty of options to actually modify and style this element, right? We want to simply change the color. So you can paste your AGB numbers in here, but you can also use this editor from here. I want to make it blue, so I will just increase this one and decrease, I think, this one. Yeah, and that's it. Let's just skip this, save, done. Okay, so I've created these variations of different colors in here. So in total, we have 16 combinations, as you can see here. And this is the maximum number in the free version of Google Optimus, right? So I can't add any other section or any other variations. Okay, let's move forward. We have the page targeting settings. This is actually a one-page website, right? So uh, it's just my domain. This is just my URL, right, of a home page. But you can modify this, add a rule, uh, when, and, etc. And make it more sophisticated if needed and we've got the audience tar targeting section which is actually pretty awesome if you have the optimized 360 you can use google audiences google analytics audiences but if you don't you still have plenty other options for example you can target only a specific google ads account campaign ad group or keyword you've got utm parameters targeting option here so you can use this you have got different device categories to pick from if you want behavior so you can target only returning users or new users uh, or from a specific referrals or from a specific city or uh, from a specific device browser or operating system right and you also have more advanced options like query parameters data layer variable so you can select a particular data layer and JavaScript variable and other options in here that are more advanced. If you won't select anything, it will target all visitors of your page, right? And you can change the editor's page here. You can add description, which I would actually recommend to do. And you can simply add your hypothesis in the description so that you will know what this experiment is about. What are you testing and what is your hypothesis? Okay, so another section is a section of connecting the Google Analytics account to your Google Optimize so that you will have all the data in Google Analytics, but also you can use your Google Analytics goals or events as objectives in this experiment, right? So I have this Google Analytics account connected here and I can add my primary objective because in Google Optimize, you can select one primary objective and up to two secondary objectives that you will see statistics in the reporting section afterwards. Okay, so you can select uh, from the list. It will be a list of your Google Analytics goals. So for example, this is a contact form submit goal. So you can select this one and this is my primary objective. Okay, and I can add additional objectives. So for example, it could be a custom objective of a custom event or a custom page view. 
if I want, right? Uh, but you don't have to add additional objects. I advise you to actually add them, but let's just skip this in this tutorial. Okay, so next is just a verification. You can run a diagnosis of your Google Optimize installation and see if it's okay. You can uh, select to turn on the email notification and this section is actually also interesting. Traffic allocation in this example, it's 100% of your traffic will be included in this experiment, but you can actually change this, for example, to 50% or if you have a very large website, you can, with a high traffic, you can you know select something like 10% and only show this experiment to 10% of your overall traffic on your website, right? Because uh, these variations and these combinations will be shown like equally or almost equally, but you can change this traffic allocation here and you can change the activation event. So if it's like a page load or an event, right? Custom event. Mostly it's like a page load. And that's actually it. You can start your experiment. Here you can also see the combinations that will actually be created, all of them, 16, right? And you can preview them, actually test if they uh, look okay on web, tablet, mobile, etc. And you can schedule your uh, experiment or you can start it right away. Okay, when it comes to reporting of an experiment, it's actually pretty advanced in Google Optimize. You can also see your data in Google Analytics experiment section under the behavior but I think that you should actually see both of them, both the reports. Uh, when it comes to Google Optimize reporting, you have uh, many different sections and the main is here. So you will have this improvement to the baseline. This is like the baseline. These are the actual combinations and you have the metric of probability to be, to be best and probability to be the best. And you have your conversion rate in here, right? So this is like the middle 95th, right? This is the middle 50 and this is the median right as you can see here if you hover it you will see the actual data so the more uh, combinations and variations you actually have the probability to be the best should be higher right to be more confident that it's actually the best variation or best combination uh, the more combinations you have the number here to be sure certain that is true should be higher if you have just few variations or combinations yeah, it could be something like 77 percent it's also okay but actually in google optimize i think it's like 95 percent to be the best after uh, at least i think two weeks and then google optimize will actually make it green and you know pretty certain that it's actually um, a better variation okay now setting up and running a multivariate test in Google Optimize should be a piece of cake for you. Remember that you always should have a defined goal in mind before you run any experiments. If you want to support this channel, simply hit the subscribe button. That's all for today. See you in my other videos. Bye.